Hello and welcome to The Wizard and the Priestess. My name is Nola and my co-host is... Coming. Coming. <laughs> so following on from our last episode, it's pretty interesting that we are actually in... Well, as of last week, we opened the Eclipse portal and... How that, did we do that? Oh, so the sun, the moon had a partial eclipse over the full moon. And that opens a portal? Yeah, so it's sort of like we will have a few eclipses in the next few months. Um, So, yeah, it's kind of a time where we really want to – well, we have an opportunity, and I think this is something I wanted to note. When it comes to astrology, the way I view it is as a framework of energy interplay. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily – you don't have to tap in. You don't have to be involved. You don't have to do the things. But there's an opportunity. So you have an opportunity to lean into the interplay of the energy that is being curated around you, whether you want it or not, it's happening. The planets are moving in a certain way. The sun is moving a certain way. The moon is where it is in a certain part of the sky. So those energies are pulling on us in certain ways. Mm -hmm. And then we have this framework that is astrology, um, that gives us something and it helps, it allows us to harness that energy. Mm. So I think like in the same ways Chinese medicine gives us a framework, in the same ways Czech gives us a framework. It's like a model. It's a model. Yeah. And you can, it's there whether you like it or not Mm. and you don't have to tap in, you don't have, you can tap Mm. out. So you can tap in a bit as well? Yeah, and I think right now in this eclipse sort of season, as it's called or known, um, it's asking us to close out a chapter. So it's, it's sort of, and that seems that's like an eclipse season tends to do, but this specifically is like, we've got to let go of what's holding us back. Like what happens? Is that the eclipse energy? Eclipse energy. Like clearing, like a spring cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, like that coincides with the spring equinox that we just passed on Sunday and it's coming up, isn't it? Oh no. Sure. (laughs) No, I know how time works week. now. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> what what we kind of want to do is like, um, yeah, let go of what's holding us down and that sort of follows on from what we spoke about last week, which is quite interesting because we create, decide these topics on the day and... Not that you can tell. <laughs> good obviously job. not. But, the um, like, you know, the self-sabotage topic is yeah. essentially was asking us to... We were asking you guys or inviting you to land into what part of yourselves are you not aware of and helping you to, well, hopefully, hopefully you gain this, mm. to create some awareness around what you are not aware of. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's where, like, right now in this eclipse season, that's exactly what it's asking you to do. What are you not aware of that is essentially holding you back from being the truest, most authentic, most powerful per- version of yourself? Yeah, because if you're blind to that or deaf to it, then it creates a lot of anxiety and pressure build up. And that's interesting, Matt, because you were just sharing that that's a lot of who you've been seeing this week. This week, a lot of anxiety patients. Yeah. Well, they come in with headaches, knee pain, back pain. So pain. Digestive stuff and it all, you can trace it all back to anxiety because they're holding on. Right. So, so potent in that. Before you go down that rabbit hole, I just wanted to say that like in terms of this eclipse season and becoming aware of what is going on around you, then we want to like, we're going to talk about today how to use and harness or, or at least talk about how Anxiety might be showing up in that sense. But mm. we want to use and harness, harness this energy um, to let go of that old version of ourselves so that we can bring in the new and can, and we'll bring in the new you, like mm. the new you that already is you, the you that is underneath all the layers of stuff mm. and um, bring that out. So first of all, we need to become aware of those pieces. So, so firstly, for that, you need energy. Right. So we should eat or? We should eat, but also 
going back to the astrology thing, mm-hmm. our primary source of energy is the sun and the moon. Mm. So if we're going through eclipse season, does that have an energetic effect? Like are people are likely to be more fatigued? Yeah, or more um, more inward for this Okay, so for more this retrospective one. or yeah. well, ideally. Ideally but then you that's would, obviously. But you can't. No. So that's probably also a part of why people feel anxious yeah. because they're feeling this pull to be separate or to be journaling or to be in, in introspecting mm. and there's no space or time for that. Mm. We are coming up to like the season of jolly times. <laughs> Or just hanging out, you know. I feel like it could be I, jolly. Yeah, well, it should be jolly. I hope so. um, but I feel like I'm in definitely in this in already like feeling the cobwebs like cleared. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> my house is getting clean. Like it's like you know we like cleaned up the back deck a little bit and like kind of that idea of mm. you know inviting people around, like spending time with people, spring equinox, catching up with like lots of families and their kids. For me, obviously not for you, but like <laughs> that, that kind of like spending time with people is like I get, yeah. I'm getting that real pull to do that yeah. because we're in springtime. But also whilst we are in springtime, we're also in eclipse season. So there's in this moment in time like that real introspection of what what is it that I'm doing that is holding me back so that I'm not actually being the best version of myself. So that ties into a few things going back to The sun and the moon, that's our primary source of our hormonal rhythm drivers. Mm. It's also our main influence of energy because we sleep and wake with the sun and the moon. Mm. So if you mess with that, you know what happens. Mm. Then our second influence of energy are the astrological frequencies. Mm. So the stars and their position in, in relation to the earth influences us in such a way that we have certain traits. So that's what... Originally, the the star sign characteristics were based from. Or your your birth, your natal birth (coughs) chart, right? (coughs) So every placement has an energetic frequency, which then, with all of these placements, actually curates you. And Mm. therefore, that is why, like, kind of you can get a bit of a grasp of what might happen at what time Mm. in your life, because when that placement comes up again, those frequencies are going to be around you and that's going to initiate something within you if you want to tap into it. If you want to tap into it. It may happen whether or not you do. Well, it will happen to some degree. It's probably not likely to happen in the way most people think it will happen because they will get a prediction, let's call it, from Mm. someone. And it will be, give me an example. You're going to win the lotto. Okay, when so you're win 40. the win the lotto. So most people are going to automatically correlate that to actual money, mm. not realizing that wealth, the lotto could be getting a promotion, the lotto could be finding a new love loved one. So it's like, oh yeah, I've just hit the lottery with this person. Mm. It's the metaphor behind it, which is likely the real meaning behind the intention. But going Mm. back to the seasons as well, in shamanism, obviously they have summer, winter, or they call it fall, but autumn, spring. Yeah. In We've just come out of winter, which is the rest phase, the introspection phase. And you said you're, as the sun's coming out now, you're getting more and more called to, you know, hang out with more people and be social and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This is also the time of year where a lot of animals newly born leave the den for the first time. Yep. So in the spring phase, that's correlated to planning. The summer phase is more action-based. It's where you get everything done. Then you go back into the autumn or the fall and that correlates to harvesting the fruits of your labour. Mm-hmm. And then you go back into winter, which is the rest phase. And that coincides also with OM. Is there like an OM chant in TCM? Like O-U-M? No, but a lot of that stuff has been like, um, yeah, it's sort of the mystical aspects of Chinese medicine you really have to dig for. Right. So I'm sure that there was this sound, but it's mm. not necessarily... Um, not that word. No. Okay, yep. Yeah. So that correlates to the four seasons as well, but it also correlates to life in the being born, being awakened, the movement, the sleep, and then the underscore. 
which is what a lot of people would call the afterlife or it could be the that don't want to use the word void but for lack of another one right now it's the void between death and life again and that reincarnative cycle but all these energies are influencing us all the time in our environment and in the sky and I think because we get so caught up in our lives with all the hustle and bustle and got to pay bills and blah, 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 they, they're not really on the forefront of our mind, so we suppress it. The more we suppress, it becomes pressurised. The more it becomes pressur pressurised, it puts in tension other things in life and eventually it has to explode. You pressurise something enough in life, it's just going to explode. And unfortunately, that explosion is what most people call pain or a disease or some kind of thing that we've asked for that we don't really want. But it's our, you could argue that it's our soul wanting that for the experience. The soul doesn't really mind if it's a good experience or a bad one. It's just about the experience. It's the ego aspect of ourselves that translate that as quote unquote good or bad. I'm grappling with where to come in there, <laughs> but I think well, what, so I was just thinking it more in terms of like, yeah, that pressure, that energy that is there and then we um, experiencing those things in the world and then, and then there's this like external pressure coming over us. So it's almost like that external pressure, that anxiety that we're feeling is almost because we are being, like whilst it's coming out in pain, it's almost like life wants to follow its path. It wants to follow its tower. It wants to find its way back to that way of being. It wants to find that equilibrium, that balance that is why it is here, mm -hmm. the reason it's come, the reason we are here for that. And whilst we sit in that tension, it's almost like from my perspective, it's like that tension's coming from you not sitting in your most authentic, powerful, true to yourself. It's the fighting the current. Right. Yeah. And so I think that that is where I find um, specifically um, all the frameworks or all the models that I like to lean into um, so potent and powerful because I love the sun and the moon, like those – that is happening whether you like it or not. That is going to impact you whether you like it mm. or not. And so, yeah, being... Um, but it's funny because in this world we're almost exposed to too much sun in the aspect of lighting. Like we're yeah, in a right. world We've full got of like... artificial lights. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> Big artificial lights. But, but when the... The sun goes down, we put the TV on, mm. we have the lights on in the kitchen, the lounge room, wherever. Yeah. And that, you know, people stay awake till all hours. Yeah, and that's something that, like, let's just, people do do that, but let's, like, bring it back to what we do. And I think personally I have, we don't have TVs in our homes, we don't we don't have that light on in the evening. Sometimes I do because I will do, like, a, um, I'll do a yoga class and I'll follow something so that is definitely there but I um I set up fairy lights in our home at some point and now like the only lights that we'll have on is those mm. and so it's kind of like it is much more dimmed and it's like um yeah I mean I'm not a saint also I spend too much time on my phone sometimes when I'm researching or excited <gasps> about a project but um there is the idea now like we try and eat with sunset and as we come into this time of year, the sun sets really beautifully just neck, like in between two trees and it goes down by our dinner table. So we like have sat there this week where it's like literally setting mm. as we're eating dinner. Um, and that doesn't happen all the time, obviously. It's like the ideal, but it does feel really different when mm. you sit outside. And even like I love that about camping. Because you one you're outside, but you literally like you've only got a little torch, so you mm. tend to like slow down a lot earlier, mm. go to bed a lot earlier, and then wake up a lot earlier too. Mm. Um, and I really appreciate that because I do find that um, yeah we are suffocated by light and mm. so much young energy or like young power, and it's um, 
and yet we're not seeing the actual sun and we're protecting ourselves from the actual sun. We're staying out of that. Mm. Um, but hang on, we've gone off a tangent. Let's bring it back to what we're going to talk about. And so um, what you might be feeling is a bit anxious at the moment. As this, from this fra- astrological framework, as this seasonal shift is occurring, it's actually asking you to let go. It's seasonally asking you. So as we move into springtime in Chinese medicine perspective, we're looking at that wood budding out of the earth. We've come from the unknown into the known. We're becoming physical. We're ele- realizing that we have this being. We are boundaryed. We have a start and a finish. We're becoming aware that we are formed. And in that, we have the ability to be malleable like the wood, grow like a beautiful lush forest, not too much and not too little, and allow ourselves to really harness that and flow. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we've done the weeding and we're doing those weeding, like doing those weeding activities um, from a more physical sense, like being conscious to plant. Well, it's really maintaining the garden physically and metaphorically. Yeah. Your body being the garden. And, um, and in doing that right now is like whilst we have like this real external energy coming, like as the sun, as the spring equinox is like just really like bright, brightened everything up for us, we also want to remember that w- w- to be externally bright, we need to ensure that we're going inwards and cleaning up our own background mm. or our own bits. So if you are feeling anxious or have been feeling anxious, we've got a few more weeks <coughs> Um, or yeah, hang in there. <laughs> hang in, hang in there. But I think you have an opportunity, and I think that's what I talk, what like I feel into all the time is that opportunity now to be the best version of you. So, what parts of your life are you not letting go? Of? What parts are in tension so much that you are holding so greatly, feeling so much that all of us, like when you do find those and spot those, you can let go and become that better version of yourself. So, I want throw that to you Matt when it comes to anxiety and I know you've shared with me before that sometimes anxiety is just a physical tension like Mm. your whole you're not actually mentally grappling with anything in the future um, but you're physically grappling yeah so the body hugs tension right it can be tension of a nerve a joint artery muscle fascia whatever it is but whatever it is your entire body is going to hug that particular tension. Now, you add poor diet onto that. You add poor, poorly designed exercise program onto that. You add the stress of everyday living onto that. World current affairs, if you prescribe, subscribe, prescribe, subscribe to that. All this kind of stuff adds more and more tension. So I've had cases in clinic where people are physiologically stressed which is so much tension it just binds the tissue that tissue binding really creates a physiological anxiety and that's interpreted by the conscious mind as anxiety so picture picture now let's do an experiment picture something that's really stressful to you yep and allowed to say me i'm picturing it so picture where you're holding that in your body. Here. Superficial. So Noor's pointing to a heart. Would you say superficial, deep? If you were to put a percentage from the skin being zero and then the spine being 100, how deep percentage-wise would it be? I feel it's quite shallow right now, 20%. 20%. So that's in the sternum. Mm-hmm. Sternum thymus C. Mm-hmm. Maybe the mediastinum, which is the space between the spine and sternum. So that's where you're holding that. Now, if you grab the tissue or your T-shirt at that level and just keep pulling it and scrunching it up, where do you feel the tension? You want me to actually squeeze Absolutely. my skin? Absolutely. Not your skin, just your shirt. Oh. Weirdo. In my neck. In your neck. Okay. So then you've got... You, pre- you might present with neck tension, mm-hmm. maybe even a headache. Mm-hmm. That could affect your eyesight. And all these things add up, add up, add up, mm. and then all of a sudden you're waking up one day, you got you can't breathe properly, <laughs> you've got a sore neck, maybe a headache. Oh, this hurts, that hurts. Not only 
of those little aches and pains and tensions there, but also the metabolic cost of being in gravity with that postural alignment as another stress to the system. But it's not really a mental anxiety, which is more you're stuck in the future relative to the present. It's your body is literally holding on mm. to keep you upright. Yeah. But then the anxiety from the mental emotional viewpoint is typically what they call futurizing. So mm -hmm. you're thinking about the future more than you are thinking about now. Mm. But then that is just a thought and that thought is really an ego thought. Because if you think the biggest part of you, right, so the unconscious, subconscious part of you is anywhere from 90 to 98% depending on who you read. So that ego part of you, two to five percent, yeah. that's the far, that's the part that you're focusing on. Mm. The two to five percent. Mm. So we have a tendency of focusing on what's wrong more than what's right. If we focus on what's right, we, we become grateful. But if we focus on what's wrong or what's missing, etc., that creates the anxiety. That creates the discord and the tension and the pressure. And then that's the thing that we need to let go of. Mm. But it's also that's the thing, right? Like if that's the thing I need to let go of, we're like trying to draw awareness to the thing that you've got to let go of so that you can be out of tension but mm. we're drawing your attention to it. So maybe if you were you've just grateful in the first it. place, yeah. maybe you wouldn't. Maybe. But I think that's the like I think I did my yoga teacher training when I was in my early 20s and I did all this like real growth work, right? Mm. And to some extent, I was ready for that. I was ready to be a yoga teacher. I felt really empowered by that and mm. I enjoyed, absolutely loved it. Um, like a month immersion, like is everyone should do it mm. all the time. Like every couple of years, you spend mm. a month just literally immersing in yourself in a like self-practice, in like daily care, deep routine about like, you know, living well, mm. being well. Um, we shouldn't be doing it monthly. We should be living that life. That should mm. be what we should be aiming for. It should be in those rituals that we do. Mm. I mean, yeah. it is. We do We do bring it back, but to the extent we still have like, lights on, we're still living in like cement building blocks um, away from nature, barely putting our feet on the earth because we're in shoes, mm. um, don't need to walk anywhere, just getting in the car. Like I don't know that I oh, – I mean, I did touch the earth today because I jumped in the ocean, but – like there's mornings where I probably haven't even touched the earth and it's the afternoon. I didn't touch the earth all day. Like, Do you feel consciously different on those days? I'm not consciously different on the days that I don't do it, but on the days that I do, I definitely yeah, okay. feel that. Um, and I try and do it most days. Yeah. As, or most days is it over... <laughs> Mm. Exaggeration, <laughs> but uh, I definitely um, am conscious of getting my feet on the earth like every day. But is there a TCM, I guess, mechanism or explanation of that, like the whole grounding thing? I would say <laughs> that you could absolutely draw it into the framework of Chinese medicine and remembering that we are always one with the earth. We are nature with. And so it comes back to the turning of the cycles and like being really conscious that you are, you are that mm. and that when we um, separate ourselves from the natural world, we are separating ourselves from the season. We're separating ourselves from that whole cycle and we're trying to cut it off essentially. Mm. So when we put our feet onto the earth, we are sent, like that conduit connection of ions that are like, that palpation of what is like vibrating underneath us is actually joining us. And mm. so I would say that every time you have your feet on the earth, you're kind of going, you could bring yourself to that spring cycle where the spring energy is moving through you. You're getting mm. that, that kind of ancestral earth energy that's coming through you and holding you and um, especially moving on the earth. Yeah. Like if you were to run on the sand with bare feet or if run on the earth, like run in the grass with bare feet, like that is part of that energetic movement into like creation, expansion. Um, there's so much letting go. There's mm. so much like vibration that is coming through you in that moment. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't, I've, I'm not like a TCM pigeonhole. <laughs> I feel like. Why not? <laughs> it's just not. I think I'm, I'm, I'm always like 
I'm quite eclectic in that way that I've always thought slightly differently already and then mm. TCM is a framework that I use alongside with many other models. So um, I don't know if a TCM clinician like a classical clinician would agree with me in that, but I do really feel that, um, yeah, there's a power and a potency of that bringing that springtime back through our day, remembering that we are cycling constantly and it's never just like mm. you're never just in one cycle. Mm. You're constantly cycles within cycles and it's the cogs that are rolling together. And if you can make that roll well, then we roll. Mm. But um, coming back to that idea of being grateful, this is where I was going with that yoga teacher training that I was talking about. But it's like I wasn't ready to fully see myself yet. I was a taster of like the pieces that I could see in that moment, but I wasn't able to fully get deeper. So mm. I remember through that training the the words and the verbiage that was being used is similar to the verbiage that I hear now. It's all the same stuff, but like being grateful is your greatest um, is your is your greatest healer. Mm. The more grateful you can be. Can it, it can expand you beyond it because being grateful means that you've already experienced something. So it's futurizing the now and allowing that to become your present. It's also accepting. Fully. Because we don't accept things, so we push that away. That creates more discord, which is more disconnect from the person, place, thing, and that creates a vacuum which invites more anxiety. Mm. Yeah, so when we think about that, but being also, I guess what I'm trying to point out is like where where we are, we may not be ready to actually hear an experience and then when we hear something again in another time, in another space, we actually start to re- feel it different way. So now I can actually tap into that idea of being grateful for mm. everything, whereas before when I was in my early 20s, I couldn't quite grasp it. Mm. I was like, yeah, I get it, but I'm not. I'm, I know what you're saying, but I can't, I can't embody that yet. I'm yeah. not there to embody it. And um, recently I was talking, we were talking in a circle about like the idea of the seven-year cycle, eight-year cycles for, that we're within as well mm. as men and women. Mm. And, I mean, it is changing slightly now. There is an idea now that we, because of the internet, because of our uptake, because of our knowledge, our brains are fast, like getting faster. We're actually learning faster. We're obviously physiologically not growing any faster. I don't faster. think we are learning faster. Look outside. <laughs> I think we've got more and more information coming yes. in. Yes, but in order to have that information coming in, we've had to, our brains have had to, adjust the wiring so that they can put it somewhere. Is that just made us more anxious maybe? 100%. I mean, obviously. So if you think of information being in formation, mm. that formation, as you said, has to go somewhere. Mm. But if we if we have more information, like we're more exposed, I can't remember the study or where I got heard this from, is essentially saying we have more information in our environment coming into us or that we're exposed to in 24 hours, every 24 hours, <coughs> than yeah. the people living in the 1900s had in their entire lifetime. Yeah. So we have 24 hours of 100 years of information. or Every single day. A yeah. life, we have a lifetime, more than a lifetime of information coming into us every single day. I don't think we have evolved to, it, to absorb it. To absorb it. The reason I say this, though, is that, young girls and are having their periods earlier. Mm. What's the average age? Uh, I think you would say between 11 and 14. Right. Um, but ideally on a seven-year cycle it would be mm. close, like 14. Um, however, because now we're, like, we're actually pushing that to five and a half years. So there is something un- like something's moving there. Is that healthy? I don't know. But I also don't want to pathologise every mm. child that gets their period younger. Um, and... Because we, there has to be something happening. Yeah, yeah. And I don't believe that um, going back and living like the ancestors is the reason, is the only way no, that we can We're not we suggesting live. go live in a cave. No. If you want. Yeah. Freedom but, of choice. <laughs> yeah, but you're probably not going to have the ability to actually eat that well because there's mm. not as many, like wild game doesn't really exist in that way. You can't, you're physically probably incapable. Like there's going to be a lot of work to do before mm. you can go out and live in the cave. However, I think it's just something to be, we are, there is wiring adjusting. And I think I see that in my kids, like the things that my daughter knows as a five-year-old and the things that she's conceptually able to understand 
there's something developmentally different for her and whether it is just the information, maybe mm. probably, but there's there has to be a wiring insert that's happening inside of her brain that's allowing some more things. And whether that is the actual environment of, you know, the astrological framework, that mm. there is this new energy and this new profound energy that's coming in like something's bigger you know, and I think it's hard when we sit in our seats as like practitioners and we see these people day in, day out and they're anxious and like little kids are anxious and mm. what were you sharing about that earlier about anxiety in children? What was I? I thought you were. No, you were sharing about um, anxiety in children and the only reason children would be anxious is because oh. of. Yeah, I can't remember what I said. I don't remember. Okay, so I think you were saying something. You'll you'll know what I'm saying now. Yeah. But um, the only thing that a child could be anxious about is their lack of free will. Oh, lack of freedom. Freedom, but, which yeah. is essentially a childhood because, like, if you were allowing a child to just be free, completely yeah. free, they would not have any structure or routine or closure or anything. There would mm. be no safety container. And I think that's one of the biggest things as a parent would I do um, where this came from and why I do it, I don't know. But it's this idea that I, my idea is that I'm creating a framework around my child that they can push up against. Mm. And in the ideal moment, they can push as hard as they want physically, mentally, emotionally. They can push against me and they're going to know I'm going to catch them every time. And if I can do that as a parent, I think I'm winning. Mm. I can't. <laughs> but I do really try. Mm. And I think that in doing that, it's like, if I was to allow a child, my child, to have complete freedom, like we were talking about mm. it, like um, play, obviously. My, one of my kids would play until like <laughs> until her eyes fell out of her mm. head and then she'd be tired the next day and, mm. and then we would she probably wouldn't eat because she's like frazzled because she mm. didn't sleep enough. And it's like there's a there is a cycle in that and mm. I think um, for a time I was like playing out this idea or that like you giving myself this kind of freedom. Yeah, you know, she doesn't go to sleep at a certain time. Like I just give her that space. She's got a low sleep needs. That's okay. Like I gave her that space to explore that. Mm. And then when I found that we kind of shifted a bit and we all we always eat dinner together as a family, but eating dinner together as a family and like what I would tend to do is like when the baby would cry or as time's gone on, the first baby, you know, I'd sort of leave the table and sit down and feed her and then mm. I'd come back. Whereas now I'm more conscious of like I sit at the table, we eat dinner, the kids need to eat dinner together. We stay there, we maintain that like kind of safety net for them to push up against mm. and then remind them that this is what we're doing. And I think personally that feels like creating a safety safety for them in routine so mm. whether that's dinner time whether that's you know kind trying to keep a bit of the same routine in the evening giving them like okay this is what we're going to do tomorrow like getting them prepared for what's happening the next day giving them those safe containers to feel held and then hoping for the best because like obviously anxiety and because then obviously they're getting external information that is mm. more than someone in their lifetime experienced I truly believe that they're here for that that their brains are being wired to experience that. And then I feel like I've we might be in a bit of a limbo because, like, it's almost like the younger generation, whilst they're a little bit more lazy, of, as I've heard, like no one's works, they do the bare minimum, they don't fully love, like, you know, if you look at, like, my grandmother's era, they would go out for the day mm. with their beautiful dresses on, they would look fantastic, hair done, makeup on, gloves you know hat like poised and proper with five kids in tow and like out they went and I mean maybe that only happened on Sundays but like that doesn't happen on Sundays in my house and it's like the hampers doesn't do it <laughs> wear his suit his hat um, but it's just like we just don't yeah, anyway, so they're kind of in that place and it's almost like almost a this is an upstanding citizen. Mm -hmm. And then today, like just a few generations below us that grew up with the internet, mm. they are, you know, it's always that thing, oh, the younger generation, and, you know, they're so mm. rude and so this and so. It's like the same. I felt the people above me felt the same way. And so I think that there is this evolution that's naturally happening. It's not happening to an extent that... Um, you know, it's changing everything. But I truly want to believe and I want to focus on the fact that we don't need to pathologise no. everything that's 
after us. And maybe, yes, like we should do different things because, you know, having kids on screens and having kids doing all those things, probably not serving them. Like we're seeing that it doesn't seem to be serving them. Mm. We're seeing that, that they're incapable of communicating. Mm. And, I mean, I was the same though as a teenager. So, like we need people in like teenager obviously <laughs> but we need people that are above us showing us these things well, it comes back to the wise elders right and i think that yeah. like that is changing in this world like we are experiencing that but maybe my anxiety as a teen was because i didn't have the wise elders although i did have some in my life mm. like i did have people it just wasn't a societal structure mm. that you know, you lean to your grandparents for that advice. Like, I mean, I personally did lean to my grandmother a lot for that, both of my grandmothers, and I'd, like, have those conversations, but I don't know many people that had that. Then I'll put to you, how many, how much anxiety would you say is your own compared to external influence? I guess there's a few different thoughts that come to mind. I would say that all anxiety is from external influence because it's an idea of what... I should be, right? It, it's the should, could, would. Yeah, right? so that's Which is not got where your belief butting up against this their is... expectation. Mm. But it's also yours to a point because you're the one perceiving it. Right. So how much anxiety do you think the average person is, let's say, experiencing today? How much is it within? How much is it without? If you were to... But they're... Aren't they just one in the same? Like, isn't it? You can't have you can't have your own without the art. Yeah, but what starts? What? Oh, with chicken or the egg? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what age <laughs> so if a tree falls in the woods. <laughs> I don't actually understand that. What? The tree fall in the wood. Did it make a sound? Yeah. What's that? Like, of course it did. You just didn't hear it. Actually, by definition, it didn't, because by technical definition, a sound must be heard. Is that what that means? Yeah. Completely beyond the scope of that question. <laughs> but that's just, I was being pedantic. Anyway. Um, I don't know, Matt. I can't think. Um, I don't know where we're going. The, path- the, the percentage. The, path- the, path- the path- percentage of how many children. No. Oh, yes. No, the percentage of how much anxiety is my own and how much is yeah. within me and how much without. I'm saying that it can't be. Let's just say that it's just. It's whole. both, but I'm saying that. I mean, one can't exist without the other. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. And now you go with your oh, percentages. I'll just, I'll just answer all your questions for you. <laughs> You're welcome. I just couldn't find the words That's for fine. it. Zero, little to no judgment here. Relax. <laughs> little. Don't, don't get anxious. Little to no. Uh, no, just tell me then what, what's the percentage or what are you saying? Do you think that that percentage of the external is I'm getting larger? I'm saying it's mostly external. What I said already. But. That, that tone is not helping. <laughs> <laughs> so that external, uh, be it pressure, it's the societal. I mean, look at COVID. How much stuff with external pressure, acting a certain way, saying certain things. Oh yeah, and it's all come way. out and said that like well, most of it we, yeah. we lied or saying, we over exaggerated. That's the episode for another day. But mm. essentially, it's the. External pressure from family, friends. It goes against your own internal belief systems. Mm. But the anxiety, sometimes even depression, gets triggered or woken up when that old that belief system of yours butts up against the belief system of them. Mm-hmm. Now, you can look at them and you can see the bigger picture of, well, they're just doing what they were told to do. No one asks questions. You might be one of those people that asks questions. Like me, people don't like it when you ask certain questions. In some instances, you're not even allowed to ask certain questions. Yep. So that in oneself can create a lot of anxiety because you want to spend that energy. You want to know certain information. Yeah. But if it's not available to you or you get suppressed um, in the act of that pursuit, then that energy has got to go somewhere. Yep. And that's where you become more and more pressurised. And then there's the idea that right before you are about to experience a huge change in your life, mm. you will meet the biggest resistance. Mm-hmm. You will butt up against the the biggest pressure. Yeah, you'll feel it the most for sure. Yeah. Mm. So 
I think in this time, whilst we're in this season of eclipse season, that's something to be really conscious of, that you have the potential for that to to actually um, to bring these things to light, that this is like you might start to feel more things and that's why we need to spend more time in introspection in a sense mm. so that you can get this through. So introspection, how can you do that? Just writing it down. Last week I suggested that you write down when you've said something like, I've done that, oh, I do that, this happens to me all the time, oh, I do that all the time. Just write it down and get a bit more clarity. Okay, first of all, writing it down and then getting used to it. But then now whilst you're feeling the feelings like, okay, what am I feeling anxious about? Get that on the table. Mm. Get your hand to just start free-flowing, free writing and see what comes through because sometimes you'd surprise yourself at, mm. well, what you're saying. And like, I know personally like I have a pretty pretty solid self-talk. Like if something's going wrong, I can if I write something on the page, like my, my go-to is like you've got this, it's going to be okay, everything happens for a reason and just surrender to the process in this moment and, yes, this is how you're feeling but mm. you're going to be okay. And then I have other, I know of other people that that, that is absolutely not what will be shared. Mm. It'd be like, no, you did such a horrible thing, how could you be such again, a bad person? Where's that thought coming from? Think about the alignment between you and you. Mm. What is your most pure natural state? Bliss. So Calm. how can that self-judgment mm. be yours? Yeah, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. Reminder, guys, it's not yours. It's not yours. I guess that's one of the, and I like, I guess a piece I want to say, touch on now is, um, okay, I want you to keep this short and simple, all right? I'm just giving you a heads up. But you can give me three of your best tips now as to how someone who right now in this time is experiencing some big anxiety or has started to notice some patterns, um, what are your three best tips? No, you don't even need to do three, but just like. I'm trying to narrow it down to three. Concise things yeah. that they can action. King of concise right here. I, first thing that comes to mind when you ask that question is ask arguably one of the most dangerous questions you can either ask yourself or someone else and that is, is that really true? I like that question. The second most dangerous question you could, or maybe even, this could also be the most dangerous. Do you know for sure is that really true? <laughs> most of the time it's going to be no. It's the story that we've created and we've do told you ourselves. Do know that that is going to be true? Or do you know that that is true? Or do you know for sure that's true? Do you know for sure that that is true? And, and then every, what was the next one? Do you really know for sure? Well, so I, well, is that really true? Is that really true? And then do you know for sure? So I saw a few anxiety true? patients this week and they were telling me everything they're worried about and I could see it in their eyes when they were explaining it to me. They were hearing it for the first time uh -huh. as they were saying it. And they're like, I know I'm going to keep talking. I know I sound like an absolute dickhead. <laughs> But this is just no what's judgment. going on. Well, no, it's just that's what they were saying. I like, know oh, I sound like an idiot right now. I realise. And then we, then we have a laugh about it. I realise what I'm saying. And then we have a laugh about it. Yeah. I'm not naturally an anxious person, so I find it amusing in a therapeutic way. <laughs> and everyone says the same thing. I'm glad I came because I didn't know like how I was talking myself into it. Mm. So then I would ask them, well, is that true? Is that really true? Do your, does your mum and dad really think that of you? Mm. Are you going to hell? Are you sinning? Mm. You'd be it's so interesting that you say that because I remember when I was learning about, oh, I think it's called EDMR, it's the eye, eye movement, mm. like eye, eye rapid eye movement, and there was an experience where this lady was expressing, it's an example of what you're describing, she was expressing about how her, when she was younger and her parents sent her to her room and she was like, they left me alone. They were so like, you know, I was alone in that moment and that like set me up for mm. not being able to trust an adult, not being able to like get myself in pickly, pickly situations because I can't trust them to save me or help me. I'm all alone and this is all on me and mm. like the world's on my shoulders. And then when they did the EDMR and she realised that actually I remember they were standing by the door and asking me, are you okay? Yeah, well. But I'd blocked that out and they like... 
yeah, she blocked that out because the narrative that she had now confirmed for herself mm. was that no one is ever there for me. So that's the wounded child going to the victim mm. and that victim is going to set her up in a survival situation, yeah. In that same way and just yeah. played out, played out and then all of a sudden their anxiety, I'm riddled with anxiety. Yeah. And I think that's something that I want to say. Did you have any other? So what did you just say is to ask the question. So number one is to ask the question, is that really true? Is that really true? And then... Do you know when you, sure when you really have true? when you've justified to yourself it must be true ask yourself are you sure it is really true yeah and even then yeah. I would say have you noticed certain uh, synchronicities like do you notice the same kind of animal do you notice do you see the same like a patient of mine sees the same number plates and it turns out it's the same initials as her late grandfather mm-hmm. it's like a she takes that as a He's looking out for her mm. and she takes great comfort in mm. that. But they were really close and et cetera. Yeah. So that's like her thing. So I'd say notice any synchronicities that's happening around you, any animals, a certain flower, a certain tree that you just... Numbers. Numbers, yeah, times numbers. as well. And look look that up because yeah. there's going to be some message in it for you. Whether you believe it or not, I'd say just humour me. Just play with it. Yeah. And I think I really want to go on from this because this is really cool because that is actually bang on astrologically what to do in this time is to connect to your higher power. The numbers. Thing no, or? No, yeah. What you just shared. Oh, the whole. Yeah, yeah. The whole. Yeah. In identifying those synchronicities. Yeah. I'm all for this and we are all for this, that the universe is here to help us. Well, it's talking to us all the time. All the time. So you can choose to pick up on it or choose to ignore it and yeah. that's yours. It's the same with astrology. It's yeah. the same with TCM framework, whatever. Actually less so with TCM because it's, I mean, it's all science really, isn't it? So it is the same. Um, but it's like you get to decide mm. whether you want to tap in or step out mm. and we always want you to step in. Well, I've, I've always found a really high correlation with something Absolutely. That I've noticed, I've noticed twelve thirty four a lot. Oh, that was the full moon. Really, twelve thirty four was what the full moon on. Correlate to the, well, the one, time. two, three, four. Yeah, uh, I guess it's a stepping stone. Uh, that would be my intuitive yeah, okay. guess. But what twelve thirty four was the time of the full moon on last week? <sighs> Boom. Hey. Alignment. Wizard. <laughs> Wizard. Wizard. <laughs> so. Look at you feeling all chatty. Okay. <laughs> Universe talks to me. Enlightened AF. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's there for everyone to see. Yeah. Matt's just tuned in and you're tuned like a tuning fork. You're tuned into that and I think that's something. But even if it's a reoccurring dream, I'll always look it up and I'll see how that correlates in life. And that's the one way Google can help you, right? Absolutely. Or a trusted source. Like you can always lean on a trusted source mm-hmm. um, if there's someone that you always go to. That's that's also but also the trusted source of in yourself what does that mean for you Mm. inside of you because it will correlate to you somehow because it is all you because you are it well because everything's made of consciousness and light so it is you it can't be anything else that's a discussion for another time i'm trying to keep this concise here you're distracting (laughs) struggling Uh, so ask the question is the first thing ask the question connect to your synchronicities I would say notice your surroundings. Notice, notice the your surroundings. environment. And then I would say right now let's go into like harnessing that energy and like connect to your higher power, your God, your source, your universal energy. Um, one, one might say becoming aware of your surroundings. Either way, you're going to tap into that energy and you're going to lean into it. And see, because you're seeing your the role you play in the greater whole of it. That's how I saw it, mm. and it's all a big dance, right? So I want to know my sort of like what role am I playing in the dance? What's my next step, as it were? <laughs> and then the third one, I would I would always recommend some kind of box breathing. So an example of that would be breathing in for four seconds holding for six seconds, exhaling. That's not box, is it? That's not a box, mate. No, box would be like four, four, four. You're a I'm thinking. I'm, <laughs> Matt's uh, doing I'm, rectangle breathing. <laughs> I'm caught on the one, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Four in, four hold, no, four out, I would say four hold. That's a box. The more 
anxious you are, uh -huh. the well, more you need to exhale relative to inhale. Okay. That's not box breathing. Though. No, I can't think of it. What's it called? Breathing. Breathing. So it's breathing in for four, hold for six, exhale for eight. Okay. Hold at the end for ten. So you try it. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale. Very good. And I would say do that for several minutes. And now you feel calm AF. I almost fell off my chair. I, yeah, thought you were going to go to a sleep. That's how you look now when I talk about anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all and for exercise. anatomy. See, Matt has this thing that I have a problem with his um, real deep anatomy talk or like when he starts talking in – you know, I've got video sinews evidence and, of it. You. Well, my point isn't that, that I'm bored and tired. It's more that I'm conscious of where our direction of the podcast is. Makes me the, really anxious. <laughs> all right. Is that inside of you? I think that's more that's internal. That's <laughs> in, it's within, not without, I think. It's the not being seen or heard. <laughs> Poor <laughs> fucking dad. <laughs> Just got some work there. It's just deep. What's the time? <laughs> Now's the time for your paper and pen. You can journal all about it. On it. Um, so I hope you gain something and, like, I hope, yeah, I hope you can lean into this energy or, that is around us right now and dance. Do the dance. Enjoy the interplay that is this life. And I guess that's what we are trying to constantly do is just find more, more and more joy in the way that we live and experience because, um, yeah, I guess – we do as clinicians, like we're working on pathology all the time, but we constantly are describing and working with people to come back to what is and is what is truly real. And um, yeah, and all the even though there's different pathologies and different um, diagnoses that come through the door, mm. it's always the same thing: disconnect from yourself. The further you are disconnected from yourself and nature, the sicker you are. Yeah, so Simple. let's come back in, become become your most authentic self and in this time allow yourself to find out what is holding you down, what is not allowing you to be your fullest expression of who you are here to be. And um, so in quick, cut out the noise. Quick question with the eclipses. Mm-hmm. When an eclipse is coming up, is that the time to cleanse or is it the time in between? I think it's a bit of like it, it, as it comes up, you come into like the shadow of the eclipse. Yeah. And as so that you sort of start to get pulled into that vortex. Right. So you start to do the work that is coming up and then once it flips and you go into the next cycle of that and because we're in eclipse season, there's ooh, three, I think, happening. Okay. So it's like... So is that cleaning up the shadow aspect of yourself? Yeah, right now. That okay. is what... It's trying to clear out that shadow aspect but clear it out in a way that is preparing us for the next, this huge, this massive astrological stuff happening in the next, uh, like from November. I think there's a point in November and it just all like shifts into the new paradigm and then shifts as of next year. We get into this whole new... Strap, strap in. Strap in, guys. But this is this is the point in time that you mm. have an opportunity to really harness the energy and I really, like, recommend you do it. Also, we have decided that we are going to start sending out emails. Yep. And so um, in the next few days we'll put a little link here so that you can get to our website uh, and you can join, the join fun. our, like, join the fun. And, we'll um, yeah, we've got some fun things that we're going to share in there. And... Yeah, you can sign up and we'll have a little sign up on our Instagram. If you're following that, please follow us. That would also be really cool because, yeah, it obviously means like gives Matt's ego a little stroke but also it, um, it also means for us that we can. Um, My ego is fine. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Now we want to share more and the more – listeners we can get the more we can expand the more we can expand the more we can share and ultimately the more people we, we just want to help yeah and that's fun for us because that's our purpose find yours doing our thing peace
You've been listening to The Wizard and the Priestess. Thanks for stopping by. Stay connected and be open.